it's important to take part to events like this. I feel a bit of pressure raising awareness for what a brain injury is. There's often lots of limitations to what it is you can do on a daily, weekly basis. You're constantly recovering. There's no finish line. And you just got to keep looking for those little pockets of positive. And there is life after brain injury. Here. Mm. So we must drop our bikes here. This is the run. We've that's got the a 6K run to start. That's a girls, girls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Veronique Tuberge. I'm originally from Quebec City, Canada, but I have been living in New Zealand for almost 15 years now. When we get, get at, to the, at, at the headquarters. Oh, I have 49. Mm. After, oh, okay. Uh, okay. What's happening tomorrow is we are taking part to an adventure race, which is called Wonder Woman. Yeah. We entered a race not knowing if I can complete it because of my brain injury. It would not make sense to walk here, walk there, mm. come back, pick bike, go back. So we can expect the race to take between five and six hours. When I'm at the starting line, I'll probably be very chirpy and very excited. But as the race will progress, my brain will start to slow down and shut down gradually. My coordination will be off, my balance will be off, my speech will be off. So I'll really struggle to communicate my thoughts. My family is composed of my fiancé, Greg, and we have three sons together. The oldest is Maxim, middle child is Jake, and our youngest son is Sebastian. I describe us as a pretty tight-knit family. We look after each other well. We're into the outdoors, and we're always looking for another challenge. Um, but we're, we're very tight and very, very loving, yeah. Yummy? Oh my gosh, look at your face. Four and a half years ago, I fell ill with a brain infection that's called encephalitis, from which I have an acquired brain injury. You can't eat all yours. The symptoms that are still present are hypersensitivity to noise, a lot of concentration problem, fatigue. In my case, my speech can slur quite badly, so aphasia. Yeah, how are you going to cope mentally in this challenge? Mindful of keeping my head in good mind space. I don't think that people fully realize how much my life and how much our family life has changed. Unless you've gone through it yourself and understand how your brain's been altered, that's just really, really hard. How encephalitis presented for me, I was actually vacuuming the carpet in our lounge um, in the evening after dinner, and it felt as though I was hit on the back of my head with a baseball bat. Must be tired, maybe a little bit stressed out, I'll go early night. The following morning, the headache had just gone up a notch again. I called the local medical center. From there, she sent us to the emergency. And on that 30-minute drive to the hospital, the headache just went from very bad to worse. They thought that it could potentially be a stroke. Got a CT scan going and that showed really bad sinus inflammation. They decided to do a lumbar puncture. Within that day, the decision was made to release me from the hospital on the basis that it's most likely a sinus infection. 
even though the lumbar puncture result had not come back. And in the days that followed, my speech was starting to slur. Went back to see the GP. She called the hospital back, and they pulled the lumbar puncture results, and they went, uh-oh, we missed something here. We tested positive something that is called enterovirus, which is when a virus migrates into your spinal fluid. And in my case, it migrated in the spinal fluid through the brain. The diagnosis for encephalitis is a very difficult diagnosis for doctors to make. And that's just due to the fact that it's a rare condition and it's difficult to diagnose. Whether I ever fully recover, it's a big question mark. I'm four and a half years on now. Exercise has been a great outlet for me because I knew it would be valuable to my recovery. In the early days, it would be just small walks, yoga at home. And gradually, as I started gaining strength and capacity, my brain started recovering. My speech, it gradually started increasing. I like to think that I'm still pretty energetic. I'm still very determined. I like to always challenge status quo. So that's why I'm keen to do adventure race. So this year, I've combined the race with a fundraiser for the benefit of the local brain injury association. It's going to be racing over 40 kilometers, where they run and, and bike, and they're looking for, for clues along the way. What I'd like to prove is that encephalitis and brain injury do not define what I can or cannot do. A lot of things have to be managed differently or scaled down, but you can still achieve great things. <laughs> the race started in Russell Township. It's in teams of four, so I have three friends joining me on that race. I'm pretty lucky because my teammates know me very well. They've known me prior to illness. It's an orienteering race, and we have to orienteer our way through a series of checkpoints, either on foot or on bike. The race often has mystery activities. In the past, there's been memory games, and when the brain starts switching off, that's when I'll be leaning on my teammates. In the morning, I actually had really good level of energy. The first part of the course was actually us going around rock surfaces around the peninsula. And I remember thinking, oh, thank God that this section of the rise is the first bit. My perception of that would have been like really challenged if it had occurred later on in the rise. The advocacy passion that I've developed for brain injury probably comes from the lack of support that I have had throughout my journey. It started with the misdiagnosis and then having no guidelines, no information available, and really having to work hard to get to meet the health specialists. The advocacy work that I do, I've joined the board of our local brain injury association, and I volunteer quite a fair bit of my time with all their social media, building their website so they're more accessible. 
And in August last year, I helped with the review of the Global Action Plan for Epilepsy and Neurological Disorder. I'm also currently working on a speech that I will be delivering in a seminar for a Brain Injury Association, Nordland. So they've invited me as a speaker to talk a little bit about my experience. Do you ever wake up feeling unrefreshed? That's going to be my first speaking opportunity. On the day of the presentation, what could go wrong is that if I'm not well rested, aphasia could very much be in play. And that means that a 20 minute presentation could turn to 40. That's my biggest fear. We were definitely not expecting as many hills as we had definitely felt like there was way more uphill than downhill. There was a lot of bike pushing, not bike riding. What's happening, B? Uh, we finished the second leg, which is bike. Just about to start leg three, which is on foot for four checkpoints. I got a Lots of uphill. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a seed bomb that we've just done for our first activity, and we're going to lob them into the bush. One, two, three. The race is going to definitely become more and more challenging as time goes by. As my physical energy starts to deplete, it just means that the brain will have less energy to operate. Onion cutting burgers. Jake is pretty good around the kitchen, so he's good with prep stuff. But they obviously still need the direction. So I'm wearing my earplugs now because at that time of day it is. TV going, boys chattering. So they just help me better concentrate by tuning out that. It's a busy lifestyle that we live at the moment. Got to hold down a job, so it's a big commitment there. Um, I tend to work uh, long hours. Around the home, we try not to put too much pressure in the morning on Veronique because that's where she has her best energy. And then where we can at night, try and help with dinner. We help her by doing like little chores around the house, like p putting up the rubbish, picking up the dog poo, making dinner. Sometimes mum struggles. Just like little things, like if she's having a bad day where she's tired, we have to be quiet. Yeah, we have to like try to be quiet, calm. If um, it's been like a loud day sometimes. Yeah, she can just get slow and fatigued. Okay, you two together? Yeah. yeah. Sweet, so game on. The boys were eight, seven, and four when it happened. Ooh, okay. I think the two older ones definitely saw a huge shift in daily life and what oh. mum could cope with. You know, mum's sleeping a lot. Why is mum needing to rest all the time? On top of that, emotional liability. So I'd be very up and down due to the brain not being able to cope with simple tasks or simple daily things that happen in family life. I would get very overwhelmed, so not very tolerant. So that would create emotional outbursts. And not being able to communicate as freely as I know I typically could. I felt like I was failing because I couldn't do what I used to be able to do. Oh. How many How close can we get? 
Yes. So there was a mystery activity which was we had to yeah, put OJ down at two girl coin and hold. Yeah, and we have all four need to do it to move on with this race. One of our teammates had really bad cramps. So we had to step back and help her through that as well. What is the speed limit? And then maneuver with the magic We got to the last bike leg. Riding a bike will require a lot of coordination and balance. My vision can get quite delayed and fuzzy. My perception of death, you know, be challenged. Hopefully, I can make the end of the rise. Progress last leg. We've cut up a bit, but it's hard. How important is your brain? Um, well, your brain is actually constantly working on gathering information. So. I'm practicing my speech that I'll be doing for Brain Injury Association. Greg's my guinea pig. People can tell that something's not quite right. Greg is very stable, so he's just been a rock. You know, if he's been disturbed by some aspect of it or saddened by some of what was happening, uh, he's kept it very much on the wrap. Probably just take some time to pause and engage with the audience. The impact on me was twofold, I suppose. We had three children, and so you have to be strong for your kids, you have to be strong for, your, you know, for Veronique, for your partner. You have to, um, you have to sort of look after everyone through that time. Her mental health has been up and down. You know, if you've got weeks and weeks of very poor health, it's hard to think where this is going to finish. I guess that's part of my role as her partner and the kid's dad is to, is to make sure that we keep on turning that around and supporting her. And, and every day, it astounds me that someone with so many challenges does do such great things. And she's supporting a lot of people now as well, which is really cool. So, yeah, I'm really proud of her. We got to the end of the last bike. We were given a map and we had to find answers around Russell Township. And by then, my brain had shut down. So my teammates just had to take the lead on that one and I was just tagging along. The impact it will have on my brain in the days and potentially week to follow is that the brain will be operating very, very slowly. So I will probably be struggling with my speech most part of the week. So today we're at Brain Injury Association Nordland. They've invited me as a speaker. So I'm, I'm a little bit nervous, but I think just good nerves at the moment. And I'm crossing my fingers that my speech will hold up long enough for the presentation. I've got cue cards. <laughs> so I'd like to welcome you all to our Raising Awareness Seminar as part of Brain Awareness Month. So I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Veronique. Brain injury recovery is not linear. It doesn't follow a straight line. It is very much up and down. I've had several phases of anger. 
I have had the depression. I have spent countless hours on the what ifs until a tinge of acceptance started lurking in the background. Came a point where I told myself, you just gotta stop moaning about it and you just gotta find a way forward. Cannot build a house with just one tool and the same very much applies to brain injury recovery. What we sometimes underestimate is the power of, you know, small shifts. There's been plenty of times where um, I wasn't sure if I truly wanted to live life um, with all the challenges it represented. But those pictures here just proves to me that it's absolutely worth it. What does the future look like for me? I'm actually feeling pretty optimistic. I proved that I can still be competitive. I proved that I can still be a valuable member of a team. I know there will still be ups and downs. Awesome. But what I've learned in the last four and a half years is I can get through those downs and come up on the other end and still achieve pretty cool things. Mm -hmm.